My name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 147. Please. Day Day 3147, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third, third edition day 147, we are working on the practice test that you will find at the end of the book on page number 366, section 6. Open your book, make sure the book is in front of you, open your book, turn to page number 366. On page 366 you will find a couple of graphs and they are asking question number 17 through 20, 17, 18, 19 and 20, those four questions based on those two graphs. Those are the ones we're going to work, work on today. So let's put down the graphs first. The first one we have here is the reaction graph, they're calling it. The reaction distance, rather. Reaction distance. We'll do the best as we can. So here we go. Uh, it goes all the way up to 60. So let's, put, let's call this thing 60. Well, actually, it goes more than 60, but we're going to stop at 60 here. This is 60. This is 30, which means it's 20, 10, 40, 50. And top part, the distance, we're going to stop at 60 also. So let's call this 60. This is 30, 20, 10, 40, 50. The first point that we have is about 10, 10. And the next one that they give you, at the ver when you look at the 60, because that's where we're going to stop, even though the graph goes on, is, uh, oh, on the, on the x-axis we have speed which is measured in miles per hour, which is why it's important that you have the book in front of you because a lot of the times I leave out things by mistake. And of course here we are measuring the distance. And this distance is what they call the reaction distance. We're going to use letter D for distance and subscript R for reaction. So what's going on here is that you're driving a car and you see something, a traffic light or somebody crossing the street. You, you, we first see it, uh, our brain registers it, we react to it and then we apply our foot on the brake and that part where we see it, we process it and then we put our foot on the brake all of that is what is referred as the reaction time and during that time of course the car is moving that's the reaction distance and once the brakes have been, once the brake has been applied, not have been, there's only one once the brake has been applied uh, it takes time for car to come to complete stop and that's the braking distance so this is what it looks like if you look at the graph at 60 at, uh, at, 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 at 60, it is 65. At, six, at 60 miles an hour, if we were to go 60 miles an hour, it is about, this is, if this is 70, if this is 70, it's 65. What that means is that the slope is not, slope is not 1. It's not, it's not 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, because it starts out at 10, 10, but at 60, it, it is 65. The slope is little more than 1. So we don't, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to, and of course it starts at 0. We're just going to draw a freehand thing. You understand? It's just GRE. We're not performing an open heart surgery. Precision is not required here. As long as we can look at the right answer, we'll see. We'll see. For well, the next graph is where we're going to measure the braking distance. The braking distance is the distance that is required once the brakes have been applied and for that it makes our life easier actually because they give us the coordinates we have 10 9 we have 20 22 we have 30 49 we have 40 88 we have 50 137 and we have 60 198 so this is the distance again on the on the x-axis the distance right here and this time it's going to go all the way up to 200 feet 198 you see so let's get going see what we can do so if that's 200 halfway would be about 100 so let's go with 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 and 5 there you go so each one of them is 20 20 40 60 80 and 100 then 1 2 3 4 and 5 there we go so they are going in the increments of 20 miles uh, 20 feet rather so very quickly we're going to plot the six points as i said we'll do the best that we can do but we're not going to fuss too much about it first one is even though it says 10 9, let's just say 10 10. So here we have the speed again. The speed, of course, is not going to go. We're going to measure it up to 60 miles an hour. 
So it's going to stop at 60. If this is 60, the half is 30, 20 and 10, 40 and 50. So first, it's 10 miles an hour. It requires 10 feet. 10 feet. In other words, from the, from the moment your brain registers it until the time, until the point in time that you actually apply the brake with your foot, the car will have traveled 10 feet if you're only going at 10 miles an hour. Then we have 2022. Let's just pretend it's 2020. So here is 20. 2020 would be up here. Because we just want to get a rough idea. Do you understand? Because we have to have graph on the on the blackboard, otherwise we can't do the problem. 40, but well it says 30, 49, let's just say 30, 50. So 30, at 30, 30 miles an hour it requires 50. If this is 60, this is 40, so 50 is somewhere here. Do you understand? Then we have 40, 90. There is a 40. At 40 miles an hour it requires 90. So this is about 90. Because right here is 80, that's 3 is 100, so somewhere there, that's 90. Then we have 50 and 140. At 50 miles an hour, they require 140, so this is 20 and 40. And at 60 miles an hour, it will take you almost 200 feet to stop the car. At that high speed, at that high speed, from the moment that you brake, from the moment that you put your foot on the brake until the car comes to complete stop, you will have traveled 200 feet. And that's good enough. Let's answer the questions. That's more than good enough. Let's answer the question. Number 17. It says, at 17, it says, the speed, the speed, that requires that requires a distance of distance of 52 feet for reaction time. We have to find the speed that is going to require a distance of 52 feet for the reaction time. The reaction time is here, even though in the book they are given the other way around. I put it here. So, 52 feet is what you are looking for. Remember, this is the feet. This is 10, 20, 30 feet, 40, 50. So, 52 feet somewhere up here. Somewhere up here, as I said. And you just come down. And it, it looks to me, it's just a little under 50 feet. Just, just a little under 50 feet. Now in the exam, we do not waste our time writing it all out. Little under 50 feet, this is how we'll show it. Little under 50 feet, 50 with the minus sign on the top. Let's look at the answer choices and hopefully there will be one answer choice that's going to be just under, just under 50 feet. Not over 50 feet as you can see. It comes out to be, where was it? At, at, at 52 feet. This is the distance that we require, rea distance for reaction. And this is, this is 50, this is 60. So 52, they're look, look, looking for... How, what, the, what is the corresponding speed for a 52 feet of distance that you will have traveled during your reaction time? And that's right here. And if you come down, let's do it one more time if you like. It's somewhere here. You just come down approximately. It's just a little under 50. It's most definitely not over 50. You can see it's not under 40. It's under 50. And only answer choice that I see that is under 50 is B. The only answer choice that we see is B. And that works. Just give me one second, I lost my... It is B. What I haven't done here, which is something that I always do, and it only takes a second because I forgot to do it. Just give me one second here. 17 is what we just finished. I'm, I'm just checking the answer choices. And I'm doing something else. Just give me one brief second. 18 is A. I don't know how I forgot it. 19 is 19 is A. And 20 is C. Oh no, 20 is C. Let's carry on there. So that was correct. Let's do number 18, shall we? Let's do number 18. A little under 50 feet, and answer choice B, I believe, said 47 feet. Yes, 47 feet. That qualifies as little under 50. 
Let's do 17. Let's do 18. Answer choice. Question question number 18 is asking us. Question number 18 is asking us. Approximate. And they don't have to say approximate because they're all approximate. You can you can be precise with something like that. Approximate total stopping distance. Total stopping distance at 40 miles per hour. So we are using D for distance, subscript B for the dis distance that's required for braking after the brakes have been applied and the distance that is traveled during the reaction time. And we're looking for total total distance which will be T with subscript T for total distance which is made up of the distance that you will travel during the reaction time and the distance that you will travel during the braking time after the brakes have been applied. All we have to do is look at the graph for 40 miles per hour and see what we find. Let me do it with a different color at 40 miles per hour. So let's start. Let's see what we can do. Here is the 40 miles per hour right here. Oh. Oh, this one is already there. It is given to us precise figure, 88 feet. But remember, this is braking distance because I wrote them in different order. So that's given to us. That's 88 feet. They are all in feet. So I'm not going to keep writing feet. They are all in feet. 88 feet is right here. It's given to us in the book. Let's see what we can find for the reaction reaction distance at 40 miles per hour. This is 30. This is 40 right here. Let's see what we can do. Oh no. If this is 40, if this is 30 feet, if this is 40 feet, this is 50 feet, to me it looks like about 45 feet. Approximately 45 feet. And let's just pretend that this is 90. Any answer choice that comes close to 90, uh, sorry, 135 feet total is what we're looking at. Let's look at the answer choices. Well, the only answer choice that is 130 or above is 130. Answer choice A. It's most definitely it's not 110 obviously. Answer choice A is the answer. Oh, I forgot to give you something for the previous question. This is number number 18. Number 17. Number 18. Number 19. And number 20. I forgot to give you the percentile for the one that we just finished. Question number 17 was very simple, very straightforward question. So simple in fact the 79% of people had no trouble dealing with it. 79% of people. The one we just finished, I don't know why. I do not know why, but more than half the people missed it. Only 44% of the people got it right. Let's do the next one. So again, one more time, we're looking at 40 miles per hour. Remember, this is the braking distance. I have written them in a different order. So braking distance, we don't have to read the graph because they give you the coordinate. They give us the precise coordinate in the graph. At 40 miles per hour, it tells us it will take 88 feet to bring the car to stop after you have applied the brakes. For 88 feet exactly. And this one we approximated at 40 miles per hour as we go up the graph, it comes over here and you come down here. This is 40, this is 50. So we approximated it as, as 45. 45 plus 88, which we approximated as 90. 45 plus, because it's easier to add, about 100, 135 feet. 133 feet, something like that. Number 19. Number 19 says, number 19 says, what is the, what is the fastest speed What is the fastest speed where a car can be brought to a complete stop within 200 feet? If you know that 200 feet is all you have to bring the car to a complete stop, because that's how much you are leaving between yourself and the car in front of you. Particularly these days, if you have a sophisticated car, this is with all the fancy electronics, and if it tells you precisely how many feet there are between you and the car in front of you, and the one and your and your dashboard shows you that you have 200 feet exactly between yourself and the guy in front of you, then the question is that if that's all I have, 200 feet, 
what is the fastest speed that I can go, what's the maximum speed that I can go, knowing full well that if I have to stop the car, I'll be able to do that without, without hitting him. Enough said. Let's take a look at it. 200 feet is what we're looking for. Let's start with 40. Why not? Why not? Let's start with 40. At, at 40 miles per hour, actually. Let's do it systematically. Let's do it a little bit lower. At 40 miles per hour, we have the distance for reaction and the dish, number of feet that will dry, uh, dry during the reaction and number of feet that will dry after the brakes have been applied. At 40 miles per hour, let's, let's go to 40. Right here is 40. I have to keep remembering that we wrote it in a different order. At 40 miles, at 40 miles, it's about 85 I would say. Oh, it's right here, 88. At 40 miles per hour, the braking distance is 88. That's given to us. I keep forgetting. Let's go to this graph at 40 miles per hour. We must have done this at 40 miles. Oh, we just did it in the previous question. At 40 miles per hour, we just did it. At between 40 and 50, we said 45. Oh, we just did it. All of this thing, we just did it. I wasn't thinking. 40, 45 plus 90 is 135. We just finished it. Let me have. So, let's put down the total distance here. 135. Which means, which means it's quite safe to go a little bit faster. Let's go 50 miles an hour. Let's increase the speed to 10 more miles, see what happens. So here we go. At 50 miles per hour is right here. Oh, it's right, right here. I have to keep remind, reminding myself. At 50 miles per hour, it will take 137, 137 feet for the braking distance. 137 feet. Let's see what we need for reaction time at 50 miles per hour. 50 is right here also, I don't know why, we must have done it here. I remember it was 52 something. Yes, was it, was it from part? Yeah, in part 17, number 17, we just did it. At, 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 at 50 miles per hour, we found out that uh, it, it requires 52 feet of reaction time. We just did it. There we go. So it's all, the work is already done. So let's pretend this is 140, 140, 140, and let's pretend this is 50, 140 plus 50. Oh, it's 190. It's 190. I would say, I would say that 50 is most likely the answer. I, I would, if I were taking the real exam, I would just pick 50 because I'm pretty sure if we go any, bit, any, any faster than that, we can exceed the 200 feet distance that we have. If you like, we can try it. It's not necessary, but if you like, we can try it. And we're not going to go by the increments of 10 because 10 will definitely put us through. Because at 60 miles per hour, you can clearly see here, at 60 miles per hour, just the reaction time, or rather, at 60 miles per hour, just the braking time is the time that it takes for a car to come to stop after the brakes have been applied. That alone is 200 feet. It requires 200 feet to come to, to it requires 200 feet to bring the car to a complete stop after the brakes have been applied. That does not include the distance the car will travel during the reaction time. So looking at 60 would be too silly. Even 55, I'm sure, is, is too silly because we already have to 190, and they're, they're asking us to go under within 200. Actually, book the book actually says less than 200. I was too too lazy to write all of it. Within 200 means we are not allowed to hit 200. It, the book says less than 200, and that's less than 200 right there. The answer is B. The answer is uh, 50. I meant. Let's look at 55. If, if you're curious, if you're hell bent on it, so let's do it very quickly. This is this is 60 miles per hour. This is 50 miles per hour. 55 and let's just come up here. Looks to me like uh, 140, 160. Remember these are in, these are all increments of 20, 160, 180, so 160, about 170. About 170. And for this one at 55. I would say about 60 feet. As you can see, it's more, more than it's almost 230. We don't have we don't have a luxury of of 230 feet uh, distance between ourselves in front of us. We only have we have, we have, we have about 200 feet. So car cannot go at at that distance between yourself and the car in front of you. You do not have a luxury of going more than 50 miles per hour. That's our answer. And let's see what 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 number was this? Number 19. Let's see what the book says. Yeah, I think the answer is A, I would say. Yeah, answer is A. The answer is A. And that was number 19. 
that was number 19. Again, if you're curious, the percentile was 41. Percentile was 41. About three fifths of the people missed it. About 60% of people did not get this question right. They do not get it right, not because it is so extremely difficult. These kind of questions actually are gift. They are gift because all that it requires here is that you concentrate and pay attention. There is no complicated calculation here. You just have to read, you just have to, just have to take your time to read the graph carefully. That's all it is required. That's all they are trying to see here if you are able to read the graph properly. Graphs rather. Let's look at the last one, number 20. We are done with this thing. Give me a quick break here. Number 20. Number 20. Says. What does number 20 say actually? Total stopping distance for a car. Total stopping distance for a car traveling at 60 miles per hour is approximately what percentage greater than the total stopping distance for a, for a car that is traveling at 50 miles an hour? Approximately what percentage greater is the stopping distance at 60 miles per hour compared to 50 miles per hour? Alright, so let's, let's figure out the distance for 50 miles per hour. So total distance, D, D stands for distance, T is for total, and superscript 50, this is called subscript, of course, and this is what is known as, if you didn't know it, it is called superscript. This, of course, you know it. Everybody knows it. This is called subscript. But I don't know why, for some reason, people sometimes have not heard of this term. So we're going to use superscript to indicate the pri uh, to indicate the speed, and we're going to use subscript to indicate whether it is the distance for breaking time or for reaction time, and t for the total total distance. So the total distance that you will travel at 50 miles per hour. How much is that? Did we ever do it? But we know, we know that it is 137 for, this is the breaking distance, and this is the reaction distance. Let's put, let's not put speed on top of it so we can have, we can have a heading for both, for both 50 and 60. Breaking distance we know it's 137. Reaction distance we have to get from here, but I'm sure we must have gotten it before. We, we got it before, last time, right here, at 50 miles per hour, oh, it's all, it's all here, it's all done, it's all done, it's 52, we did it before, so it's total of 190, it's a total of 190, I'm going to squeeze it in here and then we're going to raise it, it's 190, it's right here, it's, and then it says 60, the total distance is 60 miles per hour, and for some reason I feel that we, we did that also, we did not do it, so let's do it here, let's insert it here, 60 miles, at 60 miles per hour, at 60 miles per hour, we have a reaction distance, which is right here, and we have a breaking distance for which a precise figure is given to us. 198 is what is given to us. That one we have to get from here, and that we actually, when we started out, we just mentioned the fact that at 60 miles per hour, you will travel 65. It looks like in the graph, not 60, which is which is why we mentioned the fact that the slope is not one; it's 65. So I would say 200 plus 65 is 265. So this is 265, and that was 190. That was 190. So let's find out. What is the percentage increase in the total distance that is required to bring the car to a complete stop compared to when you're going 60 miles per hour as opposed to when you're going slower at 50 miles per hour? What is the percentage increase in the stopping distance what is the percentage increase in the stopping distance between the speed of 50 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour? So 50 miles per hour is our point of reference. You have to keep that in mind. So the difference obviously is 75. The difference is 75. So the question now is 75 is 75 is what percent of? Remember our reference point is this guy. Our reference point is this guy of 190. Of 190. So let's see what you can do. So it's 75, 75 over 190, 75 over 190 
let's just let's just pretend let's just do a simple calculation let's just do a simple approximation let's pretend it's 75 over 200 because it will make our math much easier do you understand 75 over rather one or 200 190 we can approximate as 200 75 is simply 3 times 25 and 200 is 8 times 25 and therefore 25s are going to go away and the answer is 3 8 and what is 3 8 in terms of percentage you have to know your 8 I have told you this many many times you have to know your 8 I'm going to do it very quickly here I'm going to raise all of this thing and we're going to quickly learn we're going to very quickly learn our 8's very quickly 1 8 2 8 3 8 in case you don't know it 4 8 5 8 and so on and so forth well 2 8 we already know 2 8 is 1 quarter okay keep this thing 2 8 we know it's 1 quarter and we know 1 quarter is 25 percent if 2 8 is 25 percent 1 8 must be half of that half of 25 and half of 24 is 12 half of 24 is 12 and since it's 25 is 12 and a half percent it is 12 and a half percent. One eighth of something. One eighth of something represents exactly 12 and a half percent. Exactly. Why exactly? Because two eighth, which is one quarter, is exactly 25 percent. What do you suppose is going to happen when we get to three eighth? Well, if one eighth is 12 and a half percent and two eighth is 25 percent, we just add them together. Two plus five is seven, and three is 37 and a half percent. By the time we get to by the time we get to 4 8, we add another 12 and a half percent. And what do you suppose you get? 1 half plus half is 1, which, call, which comes here. 7, 8. I, I, you understand I'm being silly here. We're being silly here. This is 10, and then 1 comes here. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is. Of course, we are being silly. Of course, we are being silly because 4 8 is, 4, 8 is half. Everybody knows half of anything is 50 percent. If we add another, another 1 8, it is going to be 62 and a half percent. 62 and a half percent. And if you were to add one more 8, if you were to add one more 8, which will bring us to 6 8, which will be 75 percent. Because 12 and a, 62 and a half plus 12 and a half is 75. And finally, 7 8, 7 8, we don't need 6, everybody knows what 6 8 is. And finally, 7 8, if you add another 12 and a half to 75, it will bring, up, bring it you up to 87 and a half percent. Do you understand? So it is not the, it is 4, 4 8 is half or a quarter if you like, 4 8 is 2 quarters or half, it is not the quarters we are worried about, everybody knows the quarter, it is not the 2 8 we are worried about because we know 2 8 is 1 quarter and everybody knows 1 quarter is 25 percent. <coughs> it is the 8 that you must know by heart instinctively. It is the 8 that you must know by heart, just like, just like if you look at a quarter, just like if you look at a quarter, we don't have to think about it, we know a quarter is a 25 percent, if you see 3 quarters is 75 percent. If we see 3 tenths, we know it's 30 percent, we know how to think about it. Just like that, you should have the eighth understood just as well. One eighth is 12 and a half percent, two eighth of course is a quarter, three eighth is going to be 37 and a half percent, five is going to be 62 and a half percent, seven is going to be 87 and a half percent. Enough said. Here, final answer was three eighth. Final answer was three eighth, but therefore, it translates to an answer of 37 and a half. The answer is going to be 37 and a half. We're going to pick the one that comes closest to it. Let's look at the answer choice question number 20. There you go. Answer choice C says 38 percent. Answer choice C says 38 percent. That is as close to 30, 37 and a half percent that we are ever going to get. And again, if you were curious about the percentile as to how people did, because sometimes it gives you a good idea as to what is going on in the exam. Only three tenths of the people, only 37, or only 30 percent of people got it right. 70 percent of people in the exam, when it appeared in the real exam, they had trouble with it. They missed it. I'll see. I'll see you tomorrow, or we'll pick up from 21. We'll do 21 and two. We want. We'll do 21 and 22 tomorrow, on day number 148. Then we'll do the remaining three questions in the next two videos. I just don't know how I'm going to divide them. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.